With the release of the new DLC and rumors on Horizon that the next DLC for Hoi 4 is going to be a rework for Germany and Co, I, I think we need to have a discussion. And that discussion is about areas of the world that need some DLC. My region that I'm suggesting being Southeast Asia. It's a location that if it got meaningful DLC and a bunch of upgrades through focuses, they could not only change this whole region, but they could change the whole map. Like imagine how many multiplayer playthroughs can be affected if you're playing as Japan. Not only do you have to deal with China and co and maybe Russia, but now you have to deal with maybe the Dutch East Indies becoming Indonesia or like Thailand turning into a menace. And that's why we're going to put it to the test today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we're going to be trying out the Ayutthaya mod. It's a mod that basically gives a focus tree and a buff to Siam or Ayutthaya. And uh, I want to give it a go. I want to see how it goes and see if it can alter things maybe in the game world. Maybe we can give Japan a run for their money. Who knows? But if you're excited to see how this is going to go, be sure to drop a like and uh, let's get into it. Okay, so starting off in the lovely nation of Thailand or Siam, let's have a look at our focus tree. Starting off, we've got the fa faction route over here for military. We have either right wing fascist or we have monarchist, which is quite nice. We have a diplomacy or a diplomatic line through here, or we have the, yes, the communist line, which I can see working well in a multiplayer game because imagine Thailand yeah, that would be an OP. Imagine the Soviet Union, Mao's China, and the Communist Thailand all working together in a multiplayer game, and you're playing Japan. That basically, I, that has potential to knock Japan out of the game, at least until like 42 when Germany starts to grow. Looking around, we have a nice industry tree, a nice army tree. We have a, a, a tree here where we can either go solo with neutrality, or we can sort of agree to join a faction, which is quite interesting as well. And then what's this? I don't understand what this is. Political power, stability. Oh, okay, so this is like a research tree okay a very small research tree oh that's pretty cool so for this run in particular i gotta be honest i kind of really want to go down the the monarchist line especially since obviously modern day thailand is a monarchist nation so i figured that'd be quite fun to do but before we start i want to build i want to go down my industry tree i want to go down my foreign office tree to get as many ben benefits and bonuses as i can because starting off with six factories doesn't really paint you as much as a powerhouse <laughs> okay so i've just about finished the industry tree here and it has done something really nice for me not only has it given me an extra research slot but i now have these guys the royal thai railways and look at that supply hub railway at 15 percent trains 10 percent production cost 25 and armor 15 that's fantastic because as you guys know thailand starts with absolutely nothing i was also just looking into as well like who to side with should i go neutrality should i side with another place and i think i'm gonna have to go neutrality simply because if i go britain they're gonna give me democracy support which is like something i don't need and it's permanent it's not like it's a temporary 700 days thing it's permanent same with germany and fascist same with america and democracy same with soviet and communist i want to choose my own route i don't really want it to be dictated through foreign embassy so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go neutrality but i want to go for this one here just because it's gonna give me loads and loads of military factories then down here we have our, our military line Again, two mil factories, two mil factories, and then a nice doctrine cost of minus, well, 75% nice. times two. Being as we're in 1937, I'm going to quickly rush through this line, rush through the military. I'm going to leave the Air Force and the Navy alone. I don't know why my voice is changing. Yeah, I had a frog in my throat. Yeah, sorry about that. I got a random air bubble. <laughs> But I'm going to do those off camera really quickly just to build up since there's not much going on. And then I'm going to go ahead and go down military factionalism and then go down the monarchist line. We'll start the monarchist line. I'm very interested to see what kind of buffs and debuffs we get from this. Also, side note, um, yeah, Japan's a shogunate again, so I don't think they're going to be bothering us in Southeast Asia. Hopefully that means French Indochina's ours to take as well as the Raj. That'd be a really nice expansion. But again, I don't know what kind of... Whoa, Italy. Yo, Italy, chill. What's going on? But as as I was saying, I don't really know what comes from the tree, so we'll just have to wait and see. And now, after finally completing the first focus to choose our ideology, we have two options of the Freya Fahon scandal. Uh, we can either attempt to maintain control, which would, you know, send us down the fascist path, or we can go request monarchy support. Obviously, we're going to request monarchy support, and that should open up Return of Rama the Seventh for us fingers crossed eventually there we go monarchy led support boom let's do this by doing this this will remove the kana raston which will give us political power plus 25 percent nice love it uh, unaligned plus 10 percent or 0.10 nice consumer goods 15 
Uh, not really a fan of that. <laughs> oh, no. This is nice, though. I'm, I'm taking a look at the tree now, and we get remove military opposition, which gives us back political power and stability. This removes the civilian wing opposition, which gives us, again, stability, political power. P uh, fuse the factions, which gives us more stability, which is nice. Return of Bor Boro... How do I even say that? Bowo Rade, which gives us war support. Pantai nationalism, which is quite nice. It gives us cause. A descendants of Shiva and Vishnu, which gives us division attack and rate. That's nice. Nice. Again, discounted leaders, which is quite nice. Legacy of Ayutthaya, which gives us uh, a new name, the Empire of Ayutthaya, and Bangkok is renamed to Ayutthaya Ma Maha Ratchachani. Isn't that Bangkok's real name anyway? Because isn't Bangkok like 24 different names or 24 different words, and that's like the full name of Bangkok or something? Isn't that true? I don't know. I could be reaching. Okay, so it seems like we've got a bit of an event here. Re-establish the Supreme Council. We've just completed this focus, and then we got this. Friar Fahon wants presidency. With the recent recreation of the Supreme Council and the state of Siam, Friar Fahon wants, would like the position as president for his assistance in our return. He has warned that he would not take uh, denying it slightly. If I say no, there's going to be a civil war. And I, to be fair, we, we've only just built up. I don't want a civil war. So I'm just going to say, okay, it's going to take 10% of my political power away, but I'm still earning two, two point a day. So that's, that's absolutely fine. Okay, we're going to welcome him back. We now have Freya. Oh yeah, by the way, this is Rama. <laughs> Look at this handsome chap. And also I have this. I have demand Indochina, demand Burma and with this I can get the event where I can ask for a bit of territory. Now India seems to be a little bit of a pickle against the Raj um, and they're also of course fighting against the the Germans because it's the Germans, the French, blah blah blah. I'm very interested to see the communists get involved since, uh, oh they don't exist anymore, but we had communist, we had communist Mexico, we've got communist uh, Russia obviously, communist Greece, communist Turkey and we have communist Portugal so that could mix things up again. Oh yeah and we have communist Italy as well, that, that should be quite important to mention. But seeing as India's in a little bit of a pickle. I'm going to go ahead and demand Burma and see whether or not they're going to give it to me. The UK declines. Why am I surprised? Okay, which means I'm going to have to go to war with my neighbours. That's not, <laughs> that's not ideal. Okie dokie, so as you can see we're kind of surrounded by France and things are not looking good for us in 1941. Now, unfortunately, the mod builds us up, but it doesn't super build us up or give us too much in the way of opportunities for growth. That's one thing I've learned the hard way. I'm currently on the biggest, uh, conscription that I can do. I only have 44,000 manpower. I, I can't move on to war economy just yet. And I'm all out of focuses. I'm literally on the last part of my focuses and then that's it. I have two options. I can either go solo and create the Southeast Asian pack or I can join the allies. Now, although I'd like to go Southeast Asian and invite Yunnan and Guangxi in, um, I can't really do that because the allies have spread like wildfire. Japan is in the axis again. Germany's fighting the allies and the Comintern all at the same time. The Allies are just grown, they're overpowered, they have a, a, a America that's spread into Mexico, the UK is doing a number, uh, the Raj is powerful, France is sitting at nearly 240 odd divisions, I, I can't grow. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to demand Indochina. I'm probably not going to get it. And then I'm going to join the allies. I, I'd, I'd rather not be the good guys. I'd rather go expansive. But I need to play things safe. Oh, I'm so surprised. France declined. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, dear. And I can't even attack because my buffs aren't even that good. Like, looking at things here. Okay, I get leader cost. That's great. Uh, what's this? Lease doesn't matter. Army production. Production cost. That's cool. I get more for my buck. Okay, consumer goods. Pretty naff. Recovery rate and attack. That's good. Uh, close support production rate that's cool uh, again production production uh, war support there's not really much in the way of expansion apart from revenge against burma which gives a permanent plus 10 attack and defense against free india not to be mistaken by the rat um, but then on top of that i also get attack bonus against france plus five and plus five for defense and attack but that's only temporarily. That's until, what, the 8th of June 42. So that gives me a whole year. And then that's it. Again, not a whole lot in the way of expansion. But I think what I'm going to have to do... I can't even expand into the Philippines either because they're part of the Allies. I think I'm just going to join the Allies and, and be good boy, good boy Thailand or Ayutthaya who managed to help solve the war and restore democracy to us all. Oh, uh, yay. <laughs> Okie dokie, so it seems like we've got ourselves a little bit of an opportunity to expand. We joined the Allies and now there's this. Offer to take over Indonesia, renegotiate unequal treaties. And with this, we get a uh, treaty renegotiation with the UK and with France. And then with this, we get the opportunity to maybe take over uh, uh, Indonesia. I'm gonna go ahead and do Indonesia first. If I can do this, this is amazing. This is this is literally the, the expansion that I need. I'm just hoping that since we're in the same faction, since we're friends, they agree. I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, uh, <laughs> there it is, improve relations right there with France and improve relations with 
the Brits and then hopefully I can get lucky enough to get them to say yes. Yep, no, that definitely comes as no surprise. The French are very, very, very resistant to uh, the sharing. So are the UK, it seems. I'm going to go ahead and then maybe try my luck here with renegotiated to territories. You know, if I can't have Indonesia, maybe I can just have Siam. You know, I can also have Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, maybe. Burma, because clearly the Brits didn't want it in the first place because they got rid of it. Please just say yes. <laughs> I need to expand. Well, it turns out that today was a good day because the UK and France finally let bygones be bygones and they let me take some expansive cause. The Empire of Ayutthaya has finally regained her territory. Hell yes, thank you very much. The Great Empire has expanded, which now opens up more doors and more territory to grow. Uh, as you can see, I get seven each. Oh yes, maybe not on the French side, but seven each. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Thank you very much. I love civvies. Now, the benefit from this is I can now start building mass amounts of factories. Well, I say mass amounts, a lot of factories, and I can start expanding my military, which increases our capabilities. Within those capabilities, our first port of order is to try and expand our dockyards, uh, which I'm going to have to maybe claim back a few of those civvies, like so. Oopsie daisies. <laughs> and then with those dockyards, I'm going to start building submarines, and those submarines are going to immediately come over here and start doing some damage on the Japanese. I need to hit the mainland. The Americans have already taken Iwo Jima. It's not going to take much longer to get them. I just need to get stuck in and do some fun. I mean, at the end of the day, it's Ayutthaya or Thailand's job to end the global war, the global conflict. It's our job to get things done. Although it seems like the Brits and the Americans are doing a blooming good job at that right now. Okay, this is amazing. Now, by accepting the call to war, we are now at war with Japan and Germany, the rest of the Axis members, a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union and Communist China. And and now with that all being the case, I have now upgraded to war economy and extensive conscription. I now have enough troops. I can start mass producing. Thank you very much. And now that we're finally here on Japan's border, it's finally time to say hi from Thai. And we're going to go ahead and launch this invasion through China. All positives here. The Japanese are undermanned, under-equipped. We have the air power thanks to our allies, it seems. Somehow, maybe not really. And our troops are just absolutely steamrolling through. We're going to try and take the Korean Peninsula. And in the meantime, the Americans should be planning a land landing on the mainland. Hopefully that can shut them out. In the meantime, my 12 stack is coming through Cairo and hopefully we'll be able to land up here in Germany real ricky tick. And here we are. As you can see, Europe has finally been forced and closed up, which is quite nice. And we are just about to do the same over in Japan. Thanks to the British getting us in with the Navy, uh, we finally made landfall in Kyoto and Osaka. And it is now time to finally wrap up Japan and get them all nice and finished. Looking at the war contribution, we are up there. We did contribute contribute a large amount. We are up there with China. We actually contributed more than the Americans, which was quite nice. And the Brits only contributed 9%. So we are we are definitely doing pretty good. The Soviet Union will probably be taking most of the winnings, but you never know. We might get lucky. Right, let's finish off Japan. It's actually crazy. It's taken me all the way until 1944 to be able to finally get Cass, and it's only just started. Oh my lord. Well, it seems like the, the Japanese should fall very soon. I imagine after I take Tokyo, they should crumble. Again, emphasis on the should. I'm going to try and get a nice push in, and, and maybe I can turn this around. I've managed to take the rest of Japan. Like, I've even just finished Hokkaido, and now the island's up here. Um, But for some reason, the Japanese are just still holding on there. They're really relentless in their defense. I just can't seem to push. I need more cast, but uh, there's no way in hell I'm producing more than enough. Ah, okay, right. Let's go to the Soviet Union and get some more resources. And it's finally come to an end. With a British tank and a Thai infantryman storming in the walls of Tokyo, it has finally come to an end, which means it's peacetime. But the problem with peacetime is I don't know how many points I have. I have 745. I have more than the Brits. Nice. Okay, I definitely worked my worth. I, it's time to take some territory. I'm going to try and take as much as I can in Asia uh, for expansion purposes. I'm not sure if I'd be able to get away with taking mainland Japan, but you know what? I'm going to try. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I know what's worse that could happen. I've just realized I've got player-led conferences on. <laughs> right, I'm going to take what's rightfully mine and I'll hand the Soviets theirs. And there's our grand finale. There's our end screen. Treaty of Berlin. The Soviet Union took 40. China took 8. The UK took 11. France took 2. We took 23. Now, as you can see, we took all of this here, the Asian lands we worked so hard for. China got this part up here and obviously Xiaobei San Ma. Northern part of Qing went to Soviet Union. All of the Japanese islands I gave to the Brits. The Raj got their territory back. Ethiopia went back to the Italians. This is how Europe ended up. I couldn't puppet and all of that, so I just kind of, you know, did a bit of a 
territory take type of thing. The German Empire, they now have Ludwig Schult, their non-aligned faction leader. And then if we go over to South America, the Portuguese are taking over the Spanish. Oh, and uh, America, Mexico's now yours. <laughs> but with that being the case, there's literally nothing else for me to do. Because uh, unfortunately, although the mod is good, and it's actually a mod that gives a custom focus tree to Siam, Thailand, Ayutthaya, whatever you want to call it. It's good. It's nice. I like it. It gives flavor. I don't think it's enough to change the face of the world per se. We didn't really do much that the allies wouldn't be able to do themselves. Um, I feel like maybe other mods or again, a future DLC could change that. But for the most part, the mod was fun. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. It was nice having a different experience. Again, there's no point in me continuing on. It's 45. The Soviet Union is the only one left to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the allies. There's really no point in continuing it. So that being said, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you like the idea of maybe getting a Southeast Asian DLC, let me know in the comments down below. And and uh, I'll see you in the next video I do. Until then, all the best and have a good one. Ta-da!